What's up, guys? <clears throat> I'm going to kind of talk loud because i got two air conditioners going down here because it's hot as hell today. Uh, it's going to be kind of a long video, so let me give you a, let me give you a rundown of what the video is going to be about. So if you want to skip through and find the parts you like, you can. Uh, first thing we're going to do on the video is I'm going to repair a couple more batteries, and I'm going to do it on, on film. So you, uh, Stacy Man, uh, Stacy at Stacy Man FPV, uh, wrote me a message and asked me would I show my process of how I repair these because I know a lot of people's tried in the past and, and don't usually have good luck with it, and it took me a long time to to be able to do it so uh, I'm going to show the process of repairing a couple of these lipos and uh, I need to talk to Ike Queen on this video about this module I have uh, and let's see uh, also uh, we're going to talk about these two frames I have started doubling the arms up on them as you can see uh, I just took the back arms off and put them up on the front so I double them up because I'm getting replacements I'm getting more arms for the rest of it and uh, so we'll, we'll do some micing and see what the measurements are on these things now that I've doubled them up so we'll know what we're going to end up with. And we're going to look and see, uh, we're going to stick a flight controller or ESC or something on these stacks here. And then we're going to see, we're going to take some measurements back here and see how well a, a Vista unit will fit in these quads. Because these none of these quads are made for, for the uh, HD stuff. So we're going to see how that works. And uh, Ike, I'm going to put on screen a picture of these arms at uh, at uh, Rotorite, and and see if I'm not right that this that you still can get the replacement arms for these. They're called uh, CL1 VS Edition. I mean, I, I assume the VS Edition stands for Vanny Style. They look identical to these arms. So, uh, and I don't know what else might be on here, guys. <clears throat> but uh, that's what we're going to do. So. First of all, we're going to start repairing these batteries, so uh, let's get started. Okay, first off, first off, I've got these two 1100C6S uh, lipos that Ike sent me, and uh, one of these, uh, they was both fully, or they was both uh, charged when I got them, and uh, the very, very first pack I flew, very first time I flew both packs, uh, a cell drop, uh, two cell dropped out of one of them. And one cell dropped out of another one, and now it's just got zero volts. Now the rest of the cells are still good, so I don't know, I, I, and I can't get it to charge because of that. So I don't know what happened. Uh, but like I say, two cells are bad in one. One cell is bad in another one. And so what we're going to do is take these two and tear them down. And then I've got this one good uh, 1300 3S uh, battery. Ain't a thing wrong with it. It's like new. But I don't have I don't have anything that'll fly 3s especially not a battery that large so that'll work perfect so I can take these two and this and make two good 6s batteries and I've got this one ovonic here that's got I believe it's got one bad cell I hope I don't know I hadn't checked it yet but I know one's real puffy it won't charge so if there's three good cells left in that one I got one good cell right here that I think I can take and make one good 4s I have got to get me some more of these balance connectors. That's the only thing holding me back from repairing more batteries. Uh, balance connectors for 6S and 4S. I've got some 4S ones, but I ain't got no 6S ones. So, first thing we got to do, the first thing we got to do is is tear all this uh, stuff off of them. Okay, my, my first piece of advice, uh, if you ever have some batteries and you're just going to throw them away, but yet you're going to you're going to repair some in the future maybe the whole battery's bad don't just throw the whole battery away tear the sucker down unsolder the wires from it keep your balance leads and your wires here keep all this rubber stuff like this that's in there sometimes there'll be silicone pieces like this in there keep all this stuff sometimes there'll be hard plates like this that cover the battery keep all this stuff if you if you if you plan on repairing batteries sometimes you'll have little aluminum hard plates like this if you plan on repairing batteries, make sure you keep all of that and keep up with it because you will need it in the future. Here's here's the two 6S tore down. You see this one's kind of a little puffy. This one's not so bad. Here's the 3S that's tore down. It was this was a like a brand new battery. Okay, there's no point in really tearing this one apart any further because we can leave it together. But we just need to unsolder the wires from it. These though we're going to have to tear probably mostly completely down, but first we're going to check them. So 
Only thing I have is this little Excel Turnigy 50 watt, I mean, yeah, 50 watt 6 amp charger. Uh, I've had it for a while. It does a good job, but I only charge on one amp no matter what I'm charging. It seems like my batteries last a lot longer by doing that. And so if you got a bunch of batteries to charge, man, it takes forever. Uh, sometimes it takes me a whole day just to charge seven or eight batteries to be able to fly the next day. Uh, but it works great. So first thing we're going to do is check them. So let's hook uh, that to there. That to there. And this this thing didn't come with no, this charger didn't come with no way to, uh, well it did, it came with a thing here, but it only thing, only way it came to power it was from a battery. So, uh, my car is not in great shape and I've just got it parked in my shop, so I just took the, uh, and since I'm living with mama, taking care of her, I don't need my car, so I just parked it. And... I took the battery off of it and I've been using my battery to charge to use it to charge this thing. Uh, so anyway, we got the battery hooked up. Let's go to I hope this shows up on camera, but it may not. Uh, we need to go over to battery meter first and we'll check it. Alright. Got zero volts on the first one. And the other four has four point two five volts. And then the last one has zero, so it's it's got one dead, uh, two dead cells on this one. All right, let's unhook it. Okay, the first thing I need to do is determine which two cells it is that's bad in this thing, because I'm not real sure. So we need to know, well, do we need to remove this cell and this cell, or do we need to remove these two cells in the middle? So the way we determine that is I hook this contraption to it. I put it in, I, I move this over from battery meter to uh, battery resistance and I plug I know that's negative so I'll hook this up to this negative here and we'll just poke it in here in the negative and I'll st stick that to there we'll hit start and it says no battery found so I know this cell here is bad okay now I believe it's this cell on this side that's bad too. So let me plug the positive into here. I'll hold that one on the negative. We'll hit start again. It says no battery found. Okay, but now let's double check. Let's check one of these in the middle here. So that's positive goes to negative, which goes to positive, which goes to negative. Which goes to positive, which goes to negative. So this should be positive here. And then we'll hold this on the negative and we'll check one of these middle cells and see what it shows. Okay. Yep, it shows a total of 28 milliohms. Okay. So now we know for sure that we need to remove this cell and this cell, which is going to be great. Makes it lots easier. So let me get my iron heated up. Okay guys, while we're waiting on this iron to heat up, let me let me go over something with you. Every once in a while, you'll run into a battery that you tear down that doesn't really have solder. What it'll have is the is the shiny tabs like this. I don't know what they're made of, but the little shiny tabs like this. The the two tabs will be pressed together like this, and it'll have like little spot welds. If you run into a battery like that, you might as well chunk it away. You can't solder to the damn thing. I don't know what it is, but and even even these here that's got solder on them if, if you bend this tab up and try to solder to the bottom side of that tab you cannot get it to stick I've even tried acid uh, solder acid to try to make it stick and it will not stick so never remove all of the solder off of these uh, th the factory solder that's on here try to leave as much on it as you can and still get them apart uh, you can remove a lot of it and then add more to it but I always leave a little on on there and let's say you got a cell in the middle here that's bad and you're going to remove it don't try to cut it right in the center 
what I mean is don't don't try to cut it like right here in the center and and to and on both of them and try to remove that cell what you want to do is cut it as close like if this is the bad cell the one in the middle here you want to try to cut this tab here as close to this bad cell as you can so it leaves all this tab so you can solder to it with the solder that's already on it same way with the other side cut it as close to this dead cell as you can so it leaves the complete tab of the other battery of the other cell intact you can resolder to this and that makes all the difference and another tip guys get your biggest fattest soldering iron tip your biggest one uh, you want your biggest tip so it'll get the hottest and you want to turn it up as high as you can get it to go let me put my glasses on here this iron goes up to 450 degrees I got this from uh, Banggood but it's been a good soldering iron but it goes up to 450 degrees and and it works pretty good but sometimes it's really hard to get the factory solder to melt so if that if that happens you just take you a little of your own solder and solder a little bit of your own solder to it on top of it and then it, it, it conducts the heat through there a lot better and it'll it'll unsolder a lot quicker let's see how we're doing here let's see if the iron's ready it's like now I'm not even gonna risk it I'm just gonna because I don't want to heat the battery up no more than I have to so I'm just gonna go ahead and solder a little solder on top of that see if I can remove that wire see how easy that wire came loose then I'm gonna go ahead and remove some of these wires because I know that one cell there's got to come off And I know this, I know this, oh it's hot. I know this other side of, this other cell out here has got to come off too. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these two. Well actually I'm going to go ahead and remove, uh, well I, no I won't. Because those are good on the inside. Don't take apart no more than you have to guys. Sometimes you have to take it all apart. But sometimes you don't. The less work you can get away with, the better. Okay. See how easy that was? It come right off. <coughs> now what you want to do, we got to separate these cells. So what I do, I just take a pocket knife like this. I don't use a serrated edge. It'll it'll rip this coating this uh, aluminum and if you rip it you've burnt the sail it'll start out gassing on you but take it, they just got sticky glue in there so just take your knife stick it in there and start pushing and go up like that toward the bad sail and just go a little further and go up go a little further and go up what you're trying to do is not pull the stuff away from the battery no more than you have to because if you know you, you want to keep them as tight as possible I have never punctured a cell doing this, but I guess there's always a first time. Once you get it started, sometimes you can do this. I really don't like doing it this way though because it, it pulls the aluminum casing away from the thing too much. Alright, that one's loose. Now we got to do the one on this side. Now, now that we got that, let's this, let's go ahead and take this loose. A lot of times I just let gravity do the work for me, so we'll just see if it'll come loose here. No, okay, this is one of them. All right, here's here's one of them. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me remove these. I hope this will show up on camera. See how that's been spot like like press spot welded or something okay so here's what I was telling you you want to make sure you keep this part of the tab that has solder on it otherwise you can't solder to the darn thing so what you want to do take you some cutters 
we know this is the, the outside sail is the bad one so we want to cut as close as we can here or we can just do it like this but either way we just want to keep we want to keep this whole tab with the solder on it and see I still got the whole solder tab there now we're gonna go ahead and cut the other one here the same way now as you can see let me show you now see how that's done you would be tempted to cut it right here if you cut it right here you're gonna lose that solder you're gonna lose that pad that has the solder on it and you're not gonna be able to solder to that you, you just are not gonna be able to so what you have to do in this case we know this is the bad sale so we want to pull it out like that and we want to cut it this direction like this right up close to the battery you see how close I cut that to the battery just cut it completely off but now we still have our now we still have our pad here that we can solder to that's the key to these batteries guys you've got to be able to solder to them to fix them we know these are the two bad sales we'll discard them so now we have a 4s battery basically that we could fix up but we want to make 6s batteries so uh now let's do this one same way first thing we got to do is find out which cells are bad i know there's i believe let me let me double check this one but i think it's only got one bad cell in it Go over to battery meter. One, two, three sales is good. Then we got one bad sale, it's got zero volts, and then the last two sales are good. So it's gonna have a sale in the middle that's bad. So we gotta find which sale it is. Okay. We'll go back over to battery resistance. We'll unplug this. Unplug that. We gotta plug this back up. Since this one has a cell in the center that's bad first thing we're going to do is just remove all these wires and so it'll be easier to work on so let me go ahead and do that You see how quick him's coming loose, guys? That's because I got a big fat tip on here and got my heat maxed out. Because if you don't, it'll take forever for that solder to melt and you'll just be heating your battery up for no reason. Alright, we got all that off. Now it'll be a lot easier for me to check it remove these things out of there we can always put them back later you know that's positive and this one's negative ah, come on now. 31 milliohms okay so now we'll move this put a positive here and go with our negative to this other one Thirty-one mil ohms, so that one's good. Now we're gonna move our positive to here and put our negative here. No battery sound. Let me double check it. Sometimes you don't get a good connection. Okay, that's our bad cell right there. And it is the third one over. So we need to pull it apart right here. Don't just rip them apart, guys. Go slow. 
because you see all that sticky glue in there all right then we gotta let's go ahead and take that one off if we can uh, now remember we want to cut it as closest to the bad cell as we can so we're gonna cut it like that so we can keep our tab now we want to pull this one apart same way here we want to cut it as close as to the batteries we can so we can keep our tab It's worth the try. All right, how's the easiest going way to do this going to be? Because we've got three cells here, three cells there. Okay. All right, guys, this is what we got. Look, we got uh, one that's got four cells. We've got one that's got three cells. We got another one that's got three cells, and we got one with two cells. Now, instead of ripping all these batteries apart and then just trying to stick six cells together. Wouldn't it not be easier to take these two three cells that's already together, put those together, and it would be a lot simpler, right? That's what I'm thinking. And you got like this one with four cells and this one with two, you put those together and you got a six cell battery. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So what we have to do now is figure out our polarities. What I mean by that is which one's positive and negative on each one. Let me get a little closer here for you. So we'll start with this one with four. Damn, the batteries are sticky. All right, so this is positive right here. So let me get a little marker here and I'll mark it so I don't forget. That's a positive right there. Okay. Now we gotta do this one. Okay. The positive on this one is right here. And uh, the negative is right here. So, what that means is and see this creates a problem sometimes. That negative has to go to that positive. So, we can't do that. And that won't work either okay because that's positive and this is negative and see you see they don't line up and that's the problem you'll run into sometimes so in this case what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go ahead and unsolder this battery and pull these two apart and we'll have to redo it okay uh, All right, now what we gotta do here, we got positive, so that means this one will be negative, and this one is positive, so we need to put it like this. Set it flat on the table best you can. Mash them down to where they almost touch here like that. If we wanna overlap the other one a little bit, that's fine. Now let's see if we can solder these back together. All right, we're gonna have to have some solder. All right, guys. Now, we know that one's negative, and, and we know this one's positive. Now, this has to be bent over this way. 
and this will have to be bent over this way and that one's going to be bent like that so then we gotta try to solder those together all right that's back to being a six cell battery now let's see if we can add a little more to this without popping it loose you add a little bit at a time guys because if you heat the whole damn thing up the battery will pop back apart there we go and that's what I was after okay now just to be on the safe side we're going to take our meter and check that we wired it right So we know this is positive on this end, this is supposed to be negative, so we should get around 24, 25 volts when we stick our meter here. And we got 25.70 volts, so that means we've got a right. Okay. Now comes the fairly easy part. Uh, let's see, we want to bend this. Kind of bend it around like this because we can't solder to the bottom side of it. We got to solder to the top side of it. So we need to bend it like this to where we can solder to it. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to put something in between here. So we can't so when we mash this battery together and tape it up or put shrink wrap around it, we don't uh, none of these things can touch and short out. So that's where you want to keep these little things and put them back in. Okay. Need something fat to go in this one. So I'm going to use one of them silicone ones. This is just for, sometimes when you wrap these things really tight, you can accidentally, I have done it before, when I was very, when I was first starting to build these batteries, and I wouldn't put my stuff back in here or something, and I would mash it too tight and short them out, and, <laughs> and they would, they'd start heating up really fast, man. Okay. Let's bend this up. Bend it back like that. Now that, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm to the point where what I normally do, uh, usually I would use shrink wrap like this. I found two rolls of this shrink wrap, this size here, at, at like a thrift store thing. They didn't know what they had. They just had it tied up with this shit. And they had it for sale for like $2 a roll. So I, I bought the only two they had. And, but it only works on really small batteries. It won't fit these kind of batteries, so when I do these kind of batteries, I have to just wrap them in black electrical tape. So the first thing we want to do is wrap the battery up pretty good, just at least a couple of loops around it, so it will uh, keep its shape and not try to come apart on you. Then later on, we will uh, wrap it tight, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, that's all it takes right there, just a couple of rounds. Now, now it won't come apart and slide and go nowhere. Okay. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I don't want my wires that long. If I did it, this is positive and this is negative. If I put my positive and negative here like that, I'm gonna have such long amount of wire sticking off the battery. And I want my battery leads and my charging lead to come off on the same side. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and desolder these and we'll just, we'll just build it from scratch here the way I want to. 
okay so this is how we're going to do it first off you need to put a little extra solder on these I know they've already got solder on them but this is factory solder and it's a lot harder to melt solder so you want to add your own solder This is positive over here, positive over here, and negative over here. So to keep our wire shorter, we're going to do it like this. So I'm going to, wait a minute, we need solder on that, a lot of it. let that cool a minute all right we're gonna put our negative here same way with over here we need to add a bunch of solder Positive's gonna go here. Alright. Now we can start putting our balance lead on. And that's really simple. First off, just put your, your red wire, you'll you'll have a red wire on each one. And that's always gonna be the positive, so just add it. Like that over there to the red one. Then take your very the furthest one over here, this one, the farthest away from the red one, and put it to the negative side over here. Okay. Now we know every wire in between the, the uh, uh, like this next one to the red one, it'll go it'll go right here. And then the next wire, see they're short and long, so you know how that, that they're going the right way. Ah, screwed that up. Alright, then the long one goes here. And then the short one goes here. All right. Now you see how that came out? And the leads are, when you get it done up, the leads are not going to be really long and they're both coming off on the same side. I like that. All right. All right, I do see that one there could get squished over. So we need something else in here uh, besides that rubber piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this rubber piece. I don't like that. And I'm going to put a silicone one in there, a longer one, a taller one. Uh, all right, that one's too long. I'm going to cut it off. And it's really too thick too. Hmm. So I'll cut it down a little. Even when you cut off pieces like this guys, save them. You will need them eventually. Alright, 
that goes right in there like that and you squish it down now there's no possible way I don't care how, how hard I squished it that them two this one and this one's gonna touch okay that battery is completely done now so let's check it with our thing here with our battery charger and make sure we'll check the resistance now then I'll show you how to wrap them up all right I've got that battery we just did first thing we're going to check is the battery meter we got 4.34 4.35, 4.24, 4.25, 4.25, volts. So all six cells are showing good. Go to battery resistance. We got eight, six, three, four, four, and four. So that's a that should be a very good battery. It's got really low resistance. That should be a really good, strong success battery. Okay. Until your resistance gets up into the like 90 to 100, your battery still usually performs pretty good. But once you start getting up into that high resistance, you start having all kind of problems. Okay guys, you could at this point just wrap this battery up with black electrical tape. Or shrink wrap it if you have shrink wrap. Myself, I like to put these things back on if, if it came with them. Okay. They, they, these are protection pads but the thing is there's no way you can squish this battery tight enough to get it back to the shape it was from the factory not by hand so what you have to do guys you have to you have to go down like if you got a shop with a with a shop vise just a regular vise you know that uh, it's got a clamp that opens and closes and you go down and you put it in the vise and you clamp it from about here all the way out to the end and just leave a little quarter of the battery left and clamp it down fairly tight I mean not so tight that you're gonna squish the battery and burst it or anything but but clamp it down to where it looks uniform once you get it clamped down then this this little quarter inch of an end you got left here will be pretty tight too and wrap that with tape and you start there then take it back out of the clamp and when you do this side here is gonna stay squished and this side's going to flare back out a little bit. So then you flip it over, put it back in the vise, and do this side. You clamp it down and leave just about a quarter. Then wrap it with electrical tape. Then when you take it out of the vise, it's going to be it's going to be pretty uniform. Then you can finish wrapping it with electrical tape or put your shrink wrap on it, and it won't be all fat like it is now. It'll be more squished down. It'll be more looking like that, you know, like it's supposed to. Okay it's kind of dark down here I hope you can see what I've done here I squished about three quarters of the battery up into the vise not real tight but just tight enough okay because that's the way they come from the factory mashed pretty tight all right you want to do the, you want to do the back end first so you can wrap this in with electrical tape because if you put this in first you could short it out to the vise so now I'm gonna take my electrical tape while I've got it squished and just start here and I mean pull it tight and wrap it tight buddy put a whole bunch of rounds around it just as tight as you can pull the tape without breaking the tape All right, now we're going to take it out of the vise. Now you see how tight that end is, but how this end squished back out? So now we're going to take it and put it in the vise this way. Do the exact same thing. We're going to leave about a quarter of it sticking out. We're going to squish it back down. And we're going to wrap this in.
And guys, uh, there's no point in buying real expensive electrical tape for this. I mean, there's times when you need real good electrical tape. But when you're just repairing batteries, you're going to go through a whole lot of electrical tape. So buy the cheapest Walmart stuff you can. It works just as good for what we're doing. You can get it for like $1.50 a roll at Walmart for this cheap stuff. And it, this is what I'm using now, and it works great. Okay. Now, as you can see, it is pretty good now. It's still squished out a little bit in the middle, but when we wrap it up real tight with electrical tape now, it will, it will it'll look a lot better. So let me finish that up and I'll show you. Okay guys, here's that 6S battery we just fixed. It's completely done, and it's just as good as a brand new battery, in my opinion, and it'll work just as good. I'm not going to show you me doing the other 6S or the 4S, because I just showed you the process. It's hard to film and do this. So now I'm going to do those, and then we'll move on to something else. Okay guys, I'm done with the batteries. I ended up with four bad cells. These cells have no voltage, no resistance at all, because they're just completely dead. Okay? And this is what we ended up making. We made one good 6S. That, and all these batteries have real low resistance. And this one is a 6S. Uh, I think these were 13, uh, 1100. These are 1100 6S's. And here's a 1300 4S. And you see it turned out great. They, like I say, they all have low resistance. Now the cells, the cells will be, since you've replaced cells with different cells, uh, they'll be at different voltages, so you will have to balance them So you'll need to put them on your charger and balance charge them and it'll probably take two or three hours For the sales to equal out you don't want to just go fly them though You want to balance them first because you'll end up running them if you don't but if you balance them let them equal out and Then charge it up good. Hey, they'll, they'll last you a long time just like new batteries. Okay, guys, the next thing I want to talk about, Ike, this is, this is for you, brother. You said something about uh, those two new quads you're sending have uh, crossfire in them or something. And that you would send me a crossfire module uh, so I could use it and fly them. I get longer range so I can set in my house and stuff. I have this module right here that Chris Justice gave me uh, about a year ago. I don't know anything about it, don't know what it is, don't know how to hook it up, don't know how to use it. I know it plugs in the back of my radio. This is for a Free Sky radio. I assume it would plug into probably your radio too. I don't know, but it, it says it's a R9M long range uh, module. So, but I have no idea how to use it or how to hook it up, how to set it up on, uh, I don't know what kind of receivers it takes. I don't know how to, you know, what, how do you wire it up to your flight controller, just to a UART, and how do you, how do you go in, into your uh, ports tabs, what do you set up, how do you set it up there. See, the only thing I have ever used is XM Plus receivers. I just know it, that's how, I, what I started using, I know how it works. I've never really had any reason to change, because I don't fly very far, so, but I would like to figure this out, and if, if this is, like a like the one something like you're sending then there's no point in you sending yours uh but i don't know what this is i don't know if this is what's considered a crossfire or if this is something else i don't have any receivers uh, and it came with this little antenna right here too uh so i don't know i guess that goes on your receiver uh but anyway i have this it's like new it plugs right into the back of my radio so you have to tell me, brother, because you'll, ha you'll have to tell me, brother, because I don't know. If it's not the same, I guess, send yours. If this will work, kind of tell me how I can use it. <laughs> Explain it to me, and I'll try to use it. All right, the next thing we're going to look at here is these quads. I uh, This is that the one I call uh, CL1. And if you look it up online in Rotor Right, it, this frame is called a CL1 VS Edition. I'm, I'm assuming the VS Edition stands for Vanny Style. And they do sell the arms for it. 
Ike, they do sell the arms for it online. I'll, I'll show you. I'll put a picture from Road to Ride up here showing you the price of them and what they are. Uh, I've already got both supposed to be sending me a set of them. <clears throat> so I need four arms so I can put back here. Same way with this one. I've already got him sending me four arms for this one. Two sets. So I can finish them out back here. Uh, so these things will be tough. Let's take some measurements. Okay. With this thing doubled up, it is 11.80, 11.90, something like that. Almost, might as well say 12 millimeters tall with them doubled up. And 8.3 millimeters wide. So it's 8 by 12 millimeter arm now that you've doubled it up. That's, that's, uh, that's, now it's getting in the range of like a tank, the dim bot, or this other one that I built here with thick arms. This should be unbreakable. And, and I want to show you. The way this is made, the way this frame is made, it's got holes in here for your flight stack, okay? So, that, and the way it's made here with this plate, you can double the arms really easy. Some frames are made really good that way and some are not, all right? If you just had one set of arms in here, though, and you didn't have them doubled up, no matter if you was running 30 by 30 or 20 by 20, you would have to remove uh, the stack screw in order to remove to replace the arm. Either that, or you got to remove the bottom plate to where you can lift the arm off of it. Okay, but by doubling the arms, you don't have to remove the stack screw anymore. Or uh, what you do is when you take these two bolts right here out. You slide the bottom, see there's a hole cut in this arm here. And that head, the head of the bolt fits down in that hole. So you can't pull this arm out. But what you can do is pull this bottom arm out. And when you pull the bottom arm out, then the top arm will just fall down and slide out too. So if you ever did have to replace the arms, you just slide one arm in, then push it up here against this, this plate, then slide your other arm in. You never have to remove these stack screws. That makes it sweet. Okay? So, we'll look about, and, and I have also lowered this one quite a bit. Uh, I say a, a lot. I, I lowered it to the next size standoff, so now it's more squished. Uh, just like I did this one, it's squished. It don't have the real tall standoffs. This one is the same way. You have to remove the stack screw if you just got one arm in it. But now that I've got two arms in it, you don't have to remove the stack screw anymore because all you got to do is remove this bolt, one bolt right here. And then uh, what happens is you'll be able to remove the top arm and then the bottom arm will, will, will lift up and out over the head of the bolt. But if you just got one arm in there, then you got to take the whole damn thing apart or either remove the stack screw. And this one, now that I have doubled the arms, Five point sixty-eight millimeters, so might as well say six millimeter thick arm now. By its skinniest point out here, eight millimeters. So six by eight millimeters on this little, on this tiny three and a half inch. That should not break either. So that's why I double my arms, guys. But you gotta play, pay close attention. A lot of frames you just cannot double the arms on them, not the way they're made. But these frames are designed great. That's why I like these. This is the. Uh, Skylight version you can double the arms on it. This is the rotor right CL1 version. You can double the arms on it This is the uh, Oh, this is a iFlight Nazgul that I have doubled everything on top plate bottom plate Sandwich plate down here the arms. I mean this sucker here is thick. It's an iFlight Nazgul, but now it takes some work uh, You got to really think this one through to put it together right but it is possible and it looks really good when you get it done all those should be an unbreakable uh, I got this one to take a 20 by 20 stack stop moving camera I've got this one to take a 20 by 20 stack and 
if you measure this stack it's 30 millimeters one way by 28 millimeters the other way so we can we can get a idea because the the uh, Vista units are 30 by 30 the mounting is 20 by 20 but uh, the unit itself is 30 by 30 uh, just don't have the right mounting holes back here but I don't mount it no way with mounting holes I use this uh, when I mount my vistas I use this uh, tape here I forget what it's called now but it is amazing stuff I'm gonna tell you and I got these two bolts right here that are gonna be in the way so I have to build it up with a couple of pieces of that tape to get it up so it'll set up high enough that it won't rub on those bolts but I do believe or right, it's 30 millimeters this way so it'll fit right on there sometimes your ESC's are bigger and your ESC's will stick out way back to here but even if it does that I still got enough room I believe to get my Vista unit in there that way and probably that way so I do believe I can get a Vista in this one and I do believe there's enough room up here to get my buzzer that's the two biggest worries that's on that Nazgul one Okay, it, it would go that way, but I don't think there's 30 by 30 in between here, nope. Okay, I can, get, I can get a Vista unit in this one too, it's got 20 by 20 mounting. So I can mount it if I wanted to, but I'll probably just use the tape. Uh, but I'm going to have to remove these standoffs right here and just run, which should be fine. Should be fine, but if I remove those standoffs, there won't be any problem with me getting a Vista unit back here in this one. And this is the CL1 Vanny style version. Alright, for this little tiny one here, man, it's it's a tiny little drone. It's got 20 by 20 mounting back here too. But I do believe if I don't put too big of a ESC in it. Yeah. I should be able to get the Vista back here in this one too. So I should be able to put a Vista in all these if I wanted to and have HD so I'm tickled to death I love the Vistas them being so small all right I hope you guys learned something I can't really go no further hell I'm waiting on stuff uh, I got a whole bunch of stuff I need and uh, I've been putting a list for bow and what I needed for the next three bills I'm gonna be doing uh, damn I hate waiting but <laughs> but I understand his point of view too he gets discounts and stuff from certain stores that he buys from and he's done used his discounts for this month so he's going to wait till next month to be able to order these parts so I just gotta sit on all this shit for a damn month but I understand <laughs> and uh, I talked to mama she's gonna let me stay in this room down here and keep building drones until my kitty cats my little tiny baby kitty cats in my room are old enough to go outside but once they're big enough for us to put them outside and for them to survive on their own out there with the other cats uh, she's gonna let me stay down here because I told her I just can't do it in my room I mean I can set up in my room no problem but I can't I can't set up in my room with those cats in there because hell they chew on everything and 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 I, a lot of times I don't finish a drone in a night so I'll have stuff thrown out on the table and that wouldn't work. I'd be knocking shit off. I'd be losing stuff. Ain't no telling what would happen. So she's going to let me stay down here until then. And that'll probably be a couple more months. At least. One last thing, guys. I want to show you on shrink wrap. If you've got shrink wrap like this, it's too small. won't fit on your batteries. Uh, I can pr I can pretty much make... This fits the small, like, 650s and 850s fairly well. But to, to get it to go on like a 1300 4S, you got to stretch the shit out of it. Now, you can't hardly stretch this stuff. You can't stretch it cold. What you have to do, get you something you can pry with. Like I'm using this here. Stick you a couple of these in there. And what you want to do is pry this apart and stick it in something like that to where to hold this apart in a little bit and then take your hands and put pressure on it like that try to stretch it apart but while you're stretching it apart you got to get you a little torch like this and have somebody else to just go over it and heat it up 
all over real hot and and as it's heating up you'll be able to stretch it out now if you stretch it too far it'll snap in two but you can stretch it almost to double its size and then once you've got it stretched out to double its size while it's still hot have somebody take a bath cloth or a paper towel that's got that's got water on it and just lay it over it right quick hold it there for a second or two it'll cool off and then you when you slip it up when you it'll slip right off of this then and it'll be double its size and then and then when you heat it then when you put it over your battery and heat it up it'll shrink right back down and and tighten up on it okay that's just a little tip for you well guys damn I know this was a long video again and I've run out of stuff to say and I've I'm kind of at a standstill here there's a lots of things I want to do but I'm waiting on parts from Bo and I'm waiting on parts from from MEPS uh, but hopefully Ike's sending me a couple of new quads to be tinkering with next week so maybe I'll I'll uh, when those get here I'll be able to fiddle with those and have something to do right now I'm kind of running out of things to do <clears throat> I guess I'll go back to watching TV and sitting on the couch and flying my drone <laughs> alrighty guys have a great day hope you enjoyed this uh, please like comment subscribe leave a comment down below if you like this if you want to see if you want to see something else or learn something else or if you got something you want to teach me make a video about it and leave a comment about it and tell me and I'll uh, I'll do my best to watch it have a great day guys